The European banks, and more specifically European monetary banks, have had a brutal start this year. They are down by over 30%. In other words, an investor has lost a third of his assets just by being exposed to this. So many people were wondering, is there a new crisis in the making? Now, if we add to this that the valuations of banks are actually less than one on a price to book value, so investors clearly say it's probably better to carve up those banks into individual parts then remain them as a going concern. The price to book today is only 0.5 times. In addition, two heavyweights, Credit Suisse and Deutsche Bank, they have been taken off to, from one of the major investment benchmarks, the Eurostoxx 50 in recent days. So people start to wonder what is going on. The EBA initiated stress tests at the beginning of this year, more precisely in February 2016. Now here it is not key that we understand the capital reserves and the capital of the banks, but we have to create a common framework in which we understand what happens if there is an adversary environment so that shareholders, regulators and investors can be prepared for this. The outcome of this stress test was very reassuring. Actually, the test was very much focusing on a falling economic growth and of rising interest rates. And it was very ensuring. Now, I should also highlight here, only 51 banks in Europe have been taken for this stress test. So 51 banks, that's roughly 71% of all banking assets in Europe. Two of the banks, Monte dei Paschi in Italy, which is one of the oldest banks in Europe, and actually Barclays, they could not confront an adverse environment over the next two to three years. I should say that roughly 10%, so five more banks, were very close, not passing this threshold. One was HSBC, surprisingly. The other ones were two French banks, Socgen and BNP Paribas. And then Uni Credito, and last but not least, Bank of Ireland. Overall, the test was actually very, very solid. And especially for Deutsche Bank, which recently was stopped by the International Monetary Fund, the source of the biggest systemic risk in the world. And Deutsche Bank passed actually very well and came out very solid. So if we look at the results of those banks, and if we have to pinpoint any issues if we look at it more from a geographic basis, we clearly see that Italy still has a problem. There are about 370 billion of non-performing loans. So some have already been absorbed by the balance sheet of the banks, but there's another 100 billion which need to be dealt with. Now 100 billion in a country which has a debt of over 2 trillion is only 5%. So Italy could easily deal with this. The problem is, however, the European Union has passed a new legislation at the beginning of this year that the governments cannot use taxpayers' money anymore to stabilize the banking sector. So it's now up to private investors. Monte di Pasci has to increase its capital by 27 billion and Unicredito probably will follow. So you can really see that investors are not amused and especially as Italian banks have dropped by over 50% year to date. In general, the European Central Bank has been extremely efficient in reigniting again credit growth, credit growth to households and credit growth to corporations. However, the expectations of many investors are still dented. We are in an environment of falling inflation and we are in an environment of negative interest rates. Many investors believe that this environment is too challenging to generate any profitability, to generate any increasing earnings, to generate capital reserves strong enough to generate shareholder returns. It's simply not possible. And when we see that actually the slope of yields is falling, that means that the profitability of banks will continue to fall as well. Our advice at Bill is that both 
the European Banking Authority and the European Central Bank has done their best to minimize any risk in the making. Now, we don't say here, please buy those banks because they are cheap. It might still be a bad investment because they might stay cheaper for longer. What we need to see very clearly is increasing inflation and the strengthening economic growth. These are the inflection points at which we could wholeheartedly recommend to our clients to buy the banks. Now, we do understand that some clients might not be very patient, so they have already parked their money in those banks. We understand that dividend yields and prices might come down further. So all what we can say to those investors, please remain patient.